Well hi guys, this is Rick. I hope everyone's having a great day. This is my last gardening video um, of this year. Apart from, I intend to do another video a little bit later on where I conclude uh, everything that I've learned about the gardening exercise this year. So I'm just going to basically take you through most of the plants and kind of uh, talk along as I go. Now, start with the cucumbers. Um, as you can see, they're pretty much on their last legs at the moment, but we've got two great big cucumbers and we've been getting a, uh, a decent sized cucumber off of it for, um, I'd say once every just over a week, we'd get a, a, a full size cucumber. So it's really done well this year. Um, but it was, uh, that was Telegraph, which I believe is an F1 variety. So it's not, um, you know, it's not an heirloom type. Now I'm not going to be growing cucumbers next year simply because I don't actually like them. <laughs> so I've been giving most of them away. Although I may do the little the Letton cucumbers, which are those little baseball shaped ones. Uh, I might grow them in that corner. Right, the peppers and the chilies, well, they're coming on nicely. Um, here we have, this is basically what my, my hot chilies look like this year. They're all little tiny little tiny little things but they are incredibly hot I mean really fiery hot you can have an entire sort of wok full of chili con carne with about three of these in and it's almost too hot to eat I've been really impressed um, so I've got quite a few of those and uh, peppers uh, we've actually got some peppers but they're, they're not a very impressive size and they're a little bit few and far between I think basically we've got one pepper on each plant and uh, got a few sort of weird looking ones there. But um, overall, well, you know, it was, it was fun growing them, bit of a novelty. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing them next year or not. Tomatoes, now these are quite, uh, quite impressive. It's these hundreds of little tomatoes. We finally got um, a decent number of tomatoes on these tomato plants. I think if you remember in the last video log, I was complaining that I was getting loads and loads of flowers, but no actual fruits. Well, obviously the fruits are now actually starting to appear. So all I did needed to do really was just um, be a little bit more patient. Hydroponics, uh, well, it's basically all the, the tomato plants are pretty much finished now. There's just one or two uh, left that I'm just sort of waiting for them to uh, go red. And then I'm gonna start cutting this lot back and uh, give it a thorough clean and then I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to start stuff off through the winter. I'll probably grow lettuce type things through the winter um, on this. But yeah, this is pretty much finished, as is a lot of the garden now. Um, everything's sort of coming to a, uh, to a close. Um, I mean, these tomatoes over here, uh, the, the, the Dr. Caroline Pink, complete waste of time. I'm not going to bother with them next year. Massive great big plant. We had about six tomatoes off it so that was a bit of a waste but again I, I wouldn't have known that unless I actually went ahead and sort of grew it but the the Russian Urbicony tomato plants I'm so impressed with those those are an heirloom variety they're from Russia and even now I've had pounds and pounds and pounds of tomatoes off these and even now I've still got clusters of them everywhere uh, just waiting to sort of uh, go red so I'm definitely going to be saving some of the seeds from those this year and uh, I'm going to be growing some next year and I'm also going to be growing next year a breed of tomato called Moneymaker because apparently they, they give you an absolute abundance of crop so uh, I'll have a little play with those. But I step outside, um, as you can see lots and lots of growth, lots and lots of um, uh, greenery going on. Now. Runner beans, you hopefully going to be able to hear me over the uh, the wind noise. Lots and lots of runner beans have done really well with runner beans this year, and uh, we've had basketfuls and basketfuls. Um, so that I have to say was quite a success. Actually, um, I'm lying. These are French beans, not runner beans. The runner beans have been okay, but they're um, They've been a little bit on the dry side. Now I don't know whether that's because I've been growing them in the pots uh, or whether it was just the variety that I had. I can't remember off the top of my head which ones I had. I think it was Painted Lady. But the, the runner beans have all been a bit, I um, can't find any now, been a bit on the, the small and dry side. But the French beans, 
uh, have sort of have, have compensated because they, they've been doing extremely well. Now, the big question, upside down tomatoes, are they any good or not? Well, <laughs> I have tomatoes on them and some of them are going red. So they sort of worked, but would I do them again next year? Probably not, they weren't that impressive. Um, I suppose the only time I'd ever consider hanging my tomatoes upside down is if I've got a little bit of air space that I can sort of fill up with them. But otherwise I probably wouldn't go out of my way to, um, to do upside down tomatoes again. Now one of the great successes we've had this year has been the um, potatoes in the bags. This is a one left. I've had five of these bags here to start with. I've got one left and uh, I'm actually going to be harvesting that a bit later on today. Uh, what I did learn from them was that you don't need to fill the bag up as much as I did. Basically, um, what I said in my original video was that you just sort of carry on adding soil until the bag is virtually full with uh, soil. But what I found when I, when I was harvesting um, the tomatoes, it was only the last sort of uh, foot deep of soil where the actual potatoes resided. So. Um, I'm probably going to do exactly the same next year, but I'm only going to fill the bags up sort of this much uh, because I think that's that's all that's necessary and uh, any more is just, just extra that you've sort of got to take out. It doesn't actually do anything. Now an interesting thing I did learn with the square foot garden was take a look at these onions. These are called Red Florence and they've grown quite large and I'm quite impressed with them and they're incredibly tasty and they've got a, quite a hot tang to them as well. Now here's the thing, I also planted exactly the same onions in the square foot garden and that is the size they came up, if at all. So they clearly didn't like the square foot garden. Now I don't know whether it's because it's too wet, whether the soil isn't um, compacted enough, uh, but I'm certainly not going to be growing onions in the square foot garden again next year. So, um, I mean, here's some more of the, exactly the same uh, breed. They're both the uh, Red Florence and they're tiny. Uh, they've done slightly better than the ones over here, but um, definitely when you compare these to these, there is no comparison. Right, we've got the, uh, the big pots with the potatoes. Now these are, these are pretty much gonna be ready to start picking um, or harvesting very soon. Um, I'm basically leaving them in the soil until a time that we actually need potatoes because obviously they're quite happy sort of sat there in the soil. That's how you store potatoes is in soil. Um, so these are basically just going to sit here until I'm ready to harvest them and uh, that will probably be uh, within, within the next month. The kale, well to be honest, a complete waste of time. It's just all shot to pieces and I'm probably not going to bother with kale again next year. Uh, these onions over here, they're all kind of looking good. I've been harvesting from those uh, for quite a while now. Got loads more runner beans as well um, from this little lot. Now these were, again, these were grown in the square foot garden and they're looking very luscious and uh, got lots of beans everywhere still. I need to come around here with my little basket and start uh, harvesting. Got this strange tomato plant here that insists on making strange shapes with the tomatoes. It, it, some of the tomatoes I had were growing little ears and they're all from this plant which was uh, quite interesting. But um, got hundreds and hundreds of actual tomatoes on this so I think it's just a matter of waiting till they start to turn red. There's one there. Um, let's give that one a go. Hmm. Well, that's nice. Hmm, I'm impressed with that. Right, another um, non-starter this year was the sweet corn. This is the sweet corn that I planted in a pot, and this is the sweet corn that I planted in the square foot garden. Absolute, complete waste of time. And uh, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be getting any sweet corn this year. Now, again, I'm not sure whether that was the growing conditions, whether it was because I was using an heirloom variety, or, um, or what, or maybe it was just a bad year for sweet corn, I just don't know. 
Now the other thing was the brassicas. You may remember I was growing brassicas, uh, you know, cabbages in the grow bags. Definitely concluded that um, bit of a waste of time. I mean, if you want to grow cabbages, you need to sort of grow them and get in there quite quickly when they're quite young because what happens is they reach a certain level and they just sort of sit there and don't get any bigger and they slowly start getting eaten and uh, that's what happened with these. I had to throw these ones away in the end because they all got eaten. Um, however, the old lettuces do particularly well in uh, or seem to do particularly well in the grow bag so I'll probably be doing those again next year although I'm talking about um, putting lettuces in the square foot garden um, next year. There's a few more here, runner beans. And, uh, and we've also got a couple of lettuce cucumbers, which are probably the variety I'm gonna be growing indoors in the corner um, next year. So that's my garden as it stands at the moment. Like I said, there's still plenty of fruits and things to be had out there, but it's all starting to go over now. Autumn is clearly on its way and I'm probably gonna have a couple more sort of great big harvests and, uh, and then that's my lot. And uh, that's, that's gonna be it for, for this year. Now I've got lots of conclusions and lessons that I've learned from, uh, from doing this little uh, exercise. And I'm not gonna talk about it now, but I'm gonna do another video that I'm, I've actually scripted and uh, where I'm going to be kind of drawing to conclusions uh, everything I've learned and uh, you know what I will and what I won't do next year and stuff um, so what I'll do is I'll leave it for now I'll shut the video down now and uh, I will go away and make that and put that up on my channel as soon as it's up so that's it that's my garden as it stands and uh, I hope it was uh, interesting and uh, useful thanks for watching guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you very, very soon. Take care.